Praise God. Surely I'm in the right place in the right time. Surely I am. And God has given me the right word. All these songs that we sung here, man, we just don't sing those songs. You, you may just sing them. But if you don't take heed to what that, them songs are saying, they mean something. They have power. They have anointing. It's speaking about the one true God. My, my, my. I didn't even know what my sister was going to say tonight either, and she just right on it, you know. Sister Salinas, I mean to tell you. I'm in the right place at the right time. Wow. It's all about him. It's all about Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Can you give a shout to the Lord? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to the King. Praise God. Tonight... I am going to give you some keys of successful living. And if you listen, you're going to leave a changed person. But you better put your ear to it in your heart. Because that's the only way you're going to get it. Okay? A lot of us come here, and we're sitting here, and we really don't take heed to what the man of God is saying. They think it's just coming out of him. But it's not. It's the Holy Spirit moving. It is the Holy Spirit moving. And tonight, my title is Hearing God's Voice. Sister Selena was talking about when you hear the voice of God at 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning, get up and pray. Amen. When you're speaking, to, when you're just sitting around and you're reading the Word and you hear God's voice, move. When you hear the voice of God. Yes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God. God has something for us. Right. And it's nothing hard about what the Lord has for us. Right. It's simple. It's easy. Yes. If you apply the heart to it. Yes. It's got to come from the heart. Yes. Because when you fall in love with Jesus. Yes. Everything changes. You're no longer the same. You're no longer the same. God does something in you. He's been doing something in me and my wife for a long time. I didn't see it. I believed it. But, you know, it takes time. In God's time. It's not in my time. It's in God's time. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I praise you today, Lord Jesus. Praise God. Before I start, can we stand? Brother Rada, could you pray over this word? Praise God. Lord Jesus, we know and believe that you are here right now. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, give me grace. Give me grace, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. That's right. Yes, Jesus. Yes, right now, Lord. Glory to God. Yes. Yes, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Everybody said amen. And praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Before I start, I want to say, back in the Old Testament, there were time periods where God spoke to his people person to person. He would come and he would speak to his people. 
hand to hand, eye to eye, I don't know how it was, but he was speaking to his people. In the time of Adam and Eve, Noah, Abraham, Moses, yeah. Dispensation times, it was a, it was a dispensation time. The patriots were back in the Old Testament. So there's three time, there are three types of periods there. When he talk, when he when he talked to Noah and all them, Abraham, and then when he brought Moses in, there was another time period that he was speaking to Moses, and he was directing him, and then we fall into the New Testament when the Holy Spirit came down. Praise God. Three time periods there. God. God has always, always want, wanted to connect with his people. That is the main thing that God wants us to understand tonight. That he wants you to hear his voice. God is real. He's alive. And if we hearken our ear to the Lord, pay close attention to what God is saying, you are going to have one of the most beautiful, blessed life you have ever, ever experienced. You will. I'm going to read some scriptures here. and I'm going to show you God, when he says something, he means what he says. Praise the Lord. He's just not just saying words. No, he wants you to get lined up with him. He's going to take you somewhere. He's going to show you something. He's going to demonstrate something to you. Oh, my, 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 you just don't know what you got yourself involved in if you really got yourself involved in it. Come on, church. I'm not going to stand up here and just say words. These are not my words. This is from, the, from him. This is his words. And they are some most beautiful words I've ever heard in my life. This is a road map. My brother the other day said, I know where I'm going. My pastor said, I know where I'm going. And I believe what he was saying. Because he knows what he's involved in. He knows what's going on. He's hearing from God and God is speaking to him. So he can stand up here and say, I know where I'm going. And praise God, I know where I'm going. Do you know where you're going? I hope you know where you're going. I hope you know what you're involved in. I hope tonight when we get through here that you're not going to be thinking the same way that you've always been thinking. That God is going to give you a word of encouragement. God is going to lift you up. He's going to elevate you like you say. You know, he's going to, oh man, the other, when I was reading, I felt myself going up. I felt the Spirit of God. I said, oh, my, my, my. Woo! This is rich, Lord. I, I thank you for this, God. Oh, I thank you, Lord, that you take time to speak to me and show me what you want me to do and how you want me to do it. Oh, yes. This is real. Oh, man, you just, oh, you don't, you don't know what I know. You don't know what I know, what he's done for me. He brought me out of the mud, the mud and he put me on, on his side. You know? Man. Oh, my God. So we see that God is talking to his people in this time period, this, this dispensation time period, the patriots. And then we know that he went... And he came to Moses at a certain other time. 
It's the time when Moses and them came out of Pharaoh. And, and Pharaoh, they were locked up at one time or another. But let me get to this page here. In Exodus 15. It's 26, but I'm going to talk about a little bit where Moses and them were at when they came out of the Red Sea. Okay? They were coming out of the Red Sea and they were in the wilderness for about three days. And they came to this place. They had water. And it was called Mara. I guess I'm saying that right. Mara. Okay. And they were there. But they couldn't drink the water because the waters were bitter. Okay. And they got upset at Moses. And they said, Moses, you got to do something about this. We're starving. Okay, and uh, so God spoke to Moses and told Moses, he says, go cut that tree down and put it in that water. And it says that he went and cut the tree and cast it into the waters and the waters were made sweet. It says that God healed the water so they could drink. It was made sweet. And then God says, okay, you've seen the miracle I've done. Now I want to tell you something, Moses, that I want you to tell Israel. Okay? And this is what God spoke to Moses about on Exodus 15, 26. And he said, if you diligently heed the voice of the Lord, your God... And do what is right in his sight. Give ear to his commandments and keep all his statues. And I will put none of the diseases on you which I have brought on Egypt. For I am the Lord who heals you. You hear that, church? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Listen carefully. <clears throat> the Lord told Moses, if you diligently seek my voice, I'm talking about get down with me. I'm not talking about laying back and just, oh, Lord Jesus, you know, I'm praying for you, this and that, for these people. No, that ain't the way God wants us to pray. No. He told him, heed to my voice and put ear to my commandments and keep my statues. Now, when I, one, one day I was talking to a man and I, you know, I was telling him about the <clears throat> about the things that he had in his house and outside of his house. And I was telling him, that's an abomination to God. They had statues. They, they had uh, things they shouldn't be worshiping to. Yeah. You know, people make all kinds of stuff and they pee other people believe it. And they're buying this and that. And it's just, it's, they're, all they're doing is bringing trouble to themselves. Yeah. All they're doing is bringing trouble. They're, bringing, they're actually inviting Satan into their house. Now God says listen to my voice. Because God. When he dealt with Pharaoh. And he knew that Pharaoh was going to harden his heart. He says I'm going to bring some plagues to Pharaoh. He, I, I'm going to bring some plagues to Pharaoh because he is not listening to my voice. I send a man down there called Moses and told him, set my people free. And Pharaoh continues to keep my people in bondage. So I am bringing some plagues to him. And I'm going to tell you, he brought some plagues to Pharaoh. Oh, yeah. Boy, he put some fire on Pharaoh. He brought hell that was caused with fire. 
He, make, he caused the whole rivers to become blood. They couldn't drink any water because he was made blood. And Pharaoh, you know what? Pharaoh had his own little tricks up his sleeve like the devil does. He's got his own gods, you know. Pharaoh had many statues of gods. But none of them could be and do the things that God were doing. They couldn't figure out how is this God that Moses is talking about doing these things. And our gods can't, can't do nothing to him. He brought locusts. I'm going to tell you something. Either God can speak the locust language or he commanded the locust and they heard his voice and they went. He brought frogs and, God, and the frogs went because they heard the voice of God. When God speaks, you better listen. Pharaoh's cows were all swallowed up. Nothing that he'd done could work. And finally, he told Moses, go away with your people. Take your God with you. You're destroying all that I have. Well, he didn't really realize that he already had everything destroyed because he wasn't, for one thing, hearkening to the word of God. He wasn't living for God. He was depending on his little saints there, his little devils that he had, statues, you know, that many people go to and buy. There's some that buy candles and candles and candles and they burn and burn and they throw them away and keep doing it. One of these days they'll burn the whole house down just because, you know, these, it's crazy. But God says, listen to my voice. Yes. Amen. Get in this word. Yes. Amen. Hear what I have to say. Yes. Listen to me. Yes. Because he says, I am the Lord thou God that heals. Yes. He heals you. Yes. He will heal you. Yes. He says, I'm your doctor. Yes. I'm, your, I'm, I'm, I'm everything that you need me to be. All you got to do is hear what I have to say and obey and go do it. Yes. Amen, church. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Yes. God is your doctor. Yes. And I believe that so much, man, it's not even funny. I, I take that word right there because I know God ain't never lied. Amen. When I call on somebody, I'm not going to the doctor. I'm calling on the one true God that knows me because he created me. Yes. He knows what's wrong with me. And if I go around saying, oh, I got a headache, well, you know what? I'm going to have that headache. If I go around saying, my back hurts, I'm going to have that back hurting. Watch what we say. Because the Lord says what you say, you're going to bring up on you. What, you. what you're proclaiming, you're going to bring up on you. Don't go around saying, I always had a sister here, uh, sister, uh, what was that brother that had that yard? He, was, he cut yards, Brother John. Uh, yeah, sister, Brother Pepley and Sister Pepley. I would go up there and ask her, Sister Pepley, how are you doing? Oh, I am blessed, brother. And I believe what she was saying, you know. And she was, you know. She, there wasn't no negatives coming out of her. She would always say, I am blessed. And when you go around speaking things like that, you're going to be. You're going to bring it down. You're going to bring it because God's hearing it. Praise God. Praise God. And so God's dealing with Moses and he says, yeah, Moses, you tell my people this and I'm going to be his, their healer. Praise God. Yes. Do you want God to be your healer? Yes. Amen. Put away all the foolishness. Yes. Amen. Put away all the stuff of the world. Yes. Put away everything and put this on. Put, put on the whole armor of God. Put the word on. Yes. Read the word. And as you're reading that word, that word has life. And I believe that. I do. Because I was, at one time, a while back, Nick Hernandez, I, 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 I almost like made a deal. I said, Nick, I guarantee you, if you just give me some time and let me read this word to you, let this word penetrate in your heart, you're going to get out of that bed. Yeah, you did have a stroke. Yeah, you did have a heart attack. But I have a God that says he's a healer. 
I, I put, I said, I, 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 I'll give you the word here. Let me do it. He says, all right. And man, I, can't, I, can't, I guarantee you, for six months, I was every day being faithful to him. After work, I'd go and, ch and check on him and read. And he was, he was coming alive. He was coming alive. But it's like the devil, like my sister said there. You know, they're newcomers. They don't know anything. They'll believe anything they hear. His sister came in with the Jehovah's Witness. You don't got to believe that stuff right there he's talking to you about. And he, he believed that. And there I went. You know, oh, I don't need you anymore. I got my sister telling me the truth. Now, okay, oh, well, Lord be with you, you know. But it's when we get into the word here and believe this word, Amen. it's when God can move. Yes. And only then, mm -hmm. praise God. In Exodus 19, here is God speaking to Moses again with the Israelites. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. And he says to Moses to tell his people, this you shall say to the house of Jacob and tell the children of Israel, you have seen what I had did to the Egyptians and how I brought you on eagle's wings to myself. I'm going to stop right there. He said, I, you had seen when you was in Egypt and you was in prison, you seen the, the plagues I brought and the things that I've done to get you out of bondage just to bring you to myself. You see, God will move a mountain. God will, God will move the whole earth just for you. Just to get to you, Rosa, the Lord will stop the sun. The Lord will split the sea. Just to get to that one soul. Yeah. Yeah. Man. Bring, it, bring my people to myself. Mm -hmm. He wants a people that he can depend on. Yeah. That he can trust. Yeah. Yeah. We're on a mission, yeah. church. Yeah. We are on a mission. We, 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 this word is not to be played with no. it's not to be overlooked right. it's not to take lightly right. we are more than honored yeah. to have this word oh, yeah. I thank God every day man the devil had me I was a drug addict I mean I was the worst sinner that you could ever see or know my mama didn't even want me in her house. That's how bad I was. I was, I was ugly. Praise God. But when I fell on my knees one day in a little town called Rogers, Texas, I was tired of my life. I didn't, I was just fed up with it. Losing everything. My family was going apart. I just, you know. Nothing was going right for me. And I didn't even go to a Catholic church. I just heard about some of it sometimes. But that night I fell on my knees and I was real with God. And God got real with me. I heard him. Yeah. That very night I was delivered. Out of 30 something years living for the devil. It took one second for God to deliver me from the drugs and the alcohol everything it, because I got real with God I got real with God he knew my heart I got to crying like a baby I'm sorry what am I doing over here in this town laying in some bed that some man got killed because he was doing something with his mother man's wife you know what am I doing here Lord where am I God is saying to you, where are you today? Are you hearing my word? Do you want your healings, your blessings? 
Are you hindering my blessings and my healings towards you? Many of us are. We're not taking heed. He wants us to himself. We are his bride. When we said I do in the name of Jesus, I said I repented. I got baptized in Jesus' name. I got filled with the Holy Spirit. God says you're mine and all mine. God says he came down. I've seen eagles come down. They're up there soaring. And when they see what they want, they focus on that one thing and they're coming down with full speed. They put their wings back and they're like a jet shooting down. And when they put their hands on what they grab, nothing can pluck it out. That's what Jesus said. God said he done. I brought you out on eagle's wings. I grabbed you right before Pharaoh and Pharaoh couldn't pluck you out of my hands. Come on. He couldn't pluck him out of his hands. He tried everything with all his gods that he had. God brought that plague and he said, uh, I'm going to bring the angel of death. And when it comes at midnight, you better have that blood applied to your doorpost. Because if you don't, you don't, if you're not hearing what I'm saying, death is going to come. And it's going to creep into your house. And it's going to suck the life right out of you. And that's what happened to Pharaoh. Pharaoh didn't believe it. You know what? His son, because of Pharaoh's ignorance and, and stupidity, his son, his family lost their lives. Many of us today, because of our unbelief or ignorance or whatever it is, we're not showing our children the right ways. My brother this morning talked about hell. There's a place called hell, and it's real. But we don't have to go there. God is, today, if you hearken your ear to the Lord and let Him carry you on eagle's wings, let Him bring you to Himself, you don't have to worry about the sickness or the way your blessings are coming out. Man, wow. And then he goes to say, now therefore, if, that little word if is a powerful word. If you will indeed obey my voice and keep my commandments, then, shall you, then you shall be a special treasure to me above, above all people. For all the earth is mine. Praise God. For all the earth is mine. And you shall be to me a kingdom of prince and a holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel. Can you hear the voice of God? Are you hearing the voice of God? Did you hear what he said? If you will obey my voice and keep my covenant, you're going to be a special people, a special treasure. Wow. Special. You're not just anybody when you're in the kingdom of God. You become his treasure to me. And above all, you're above, man, you're above all the people. Yes, we are no longer the same. <laughs> Jesus says, come out from among you, be you separate, saith the Lord. Amen. Come out from among them, be separate, saith the Lord. You're going to be a special people. Yes, what is that telling you, church? What is that saying, church? You're special you're no longer the same people. You're above. You are above everybody because you're, you're, you're special. You're, you're his child. 
You have favor wherever you go. The other day, me and my wife would leave in, and my wife says, I'm thirsty. I want a lemonade. And I said, oh, it's getting a little late. You know how we are. <laughs> I said, oh, it's getting a little late. <laughs> and I, oh, I said, you know what? We, just, we got something at home. He's like a man, you know. And then, and then the Lord, I, I heard the Lord say, no, you ain't going to get away with that. <laughs> you better do what your wife says you want to do. Yeah. And I was bed. I was over, I already halfway to the house. I, I got so convicted I had to turn around and come home, come back into town. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Just for her because I don't know what prayer she said, but man, I just, whoa, hold up. God, I hear you. <laughs> you know, I hear you, Lord. And I went all the way around and I, we went and got that uh, lemonade. It was on the airport road. And we got up there. This is how it, it may be something, it may not even, uh, you know, you may not think nothing of it. But to me, yeah. it's something. Yeah. We got up to the window and I said, I need two large lemonades for me and my wife. And she goes, This is your lucky day. <laughs> well, praise God. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I started praising God. I said, God, thank you for the favor. You know, <laughs> if I would have done that, I would have missed that on that blessing. <laughs> Mine, you know, it's a small thing, but it's something, you know. I'm going to tell you another story. I'm going to tell you, uh, some of y'all remember this young man. He was about 15, 17 years old. His name was Richard. He come from all across the world. What was that? Uh, Honduras. Young, young man. But because somebody was praying for him in California, they were hearing from God, and they were praying and fasting. This young little man, a young man, you don't know what he went through, but God brought him on eagle's wings all the way, Brother Rattle, to, the, to where we were having church when you first began. Young, young man. His name was Richard. And I wasn't even going to come that night, but the Lord told me, go. Yeah. And I, and I went. I, I came to the service, and there we were. And, and he said that he, he swung. I don't know how he, he swimmed, but, man, that's the ocean. He went all the way through that ocean. He, he came all the way through Mexico. And he said he walked right through the border, and nobody even seen him. And you, that's impossible. That is impossible. You can't do that. that. That's not even heard of. He walked day and night. Can you imagine how the desert was freezing cold and then burning hot and dear in the day? Snakes everywhere. I don't even know where he got his food. But God was providing it. He was making a way. And there were people, I didn't even know, there were people on the other side in California that were praying for him. Yeah, apostolic. <laughs> on top of that, apostolic, people like us here today were praying and fasting for this young man because his family was starving over there and they, want, they had a job for him to, when he came over here. And that night he showed up right here on the highway. And he said as soon as he stepped off that truck, there was a Bible laying there. That, you can believe that or not. Yeah. And it had five dollars in it. And he said, he asked somebody, is there a church around here? And they pointed it straight to my brother here. Yeah. And he didn't speak English. No. Yeah, he didn't speak no English. A young man. They speak any English. And they came up and took the offering. He goes, I got $5. I'm going to put it in the offering. That's all it took. He was obeying. Praise the Lord. And I took him home with me. And three days he spent the, the day. Night, and my brother here, and there was no way. I don't even know how he even got hired. But they gave him a job where, he, where you was working at, brother. Yeah, best way. They, they, God was just opening doors. 
That's the kind of God we serve. When God wants you to get, when God wants you to get from point A to point B, He is going to make a way. And there ain't nobody going to stop it. There ain't nobody going to stop it. Nobody can close it or open it but Him. He says, I own everything. I own all the nations. I own every bank. I am the banker. I am the healer. I am the provider. I am the one that's going to bless you. I'm the one that's going to heal you. Praise God. I am the Lord your God. And if they ask who sent you, say, I am. I am present today. I'm doing it today. Praise God. And then he, three days he got a little money together and he says, uh, I'm going to need a ride to, uh, to the airport. And I said, well, the closest one is Austin. Let's go. That Friday, brother, I loaded him up. He didn't have much. And he, I, I, to me, you know what? I had little bitty lights and stuff, just little bitty stuff. But to him, it was like, man, I've never seen anything like this. Can I, can, can I take this? Well, I said, you can take everything. You know, he was, man, he was just, he never seen, where they come from, there is the poorest country, you know. I got him in my old truck and we went to Austin and I put him in that plane and there was no kind of, he didn't have any papers, he didn't have nothing, they just loaded him up on the plane. <laughs> yeah, on eagle's wings. Yeah, my God. <laughs> Y'all, y'all, man, y'all don't know the God I serve. You know, I don't know, some of y'all do, but I, man, man. And it didn't take him long. He got down there and they called. Thank you so much. We have been fasting and praying for that he would make it. That ain't nothing but the Lord. Amen. Nothing but the Lord. He made it because somebody was praying and hearing God's voice. Amen. God is real. If you need a healing or a blessing, go to the book. Put away all the little things that you've been doing all these years. They don't work. And they're not going to work until you come to a place of repentance. Until you truly repent and say, God, I can't do it. I've been making a mess of it. I need you to be the pilot. I need you to guide me. I need a word from you, Lord. I need to hear from you, God. Because what I've been doing, I've been doing it all wrong. Glory to God. We have a God that's real. Yes, He is. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to go to the book of Deuteronomy. Lord, help me, Jesus. We're going to Deuteronomy 28. I'm going to show you how God works here. Deuteronomy 28. There are two things here that I'm going to show you. You can receive his blessings or you can bring sickness, chaos into your life like you've never seen. There's two things he's going to show here. God's been dealing with his people and God's been telling them all you got to do. It's simple. All you got to do is obey, hear my voice, do exactly like I say. And there's two things here that God is going to show us on these scriptures. I'm going to read one and two first on chapter 28, Deuteronomy. Now, it shall come to pass, and you can believe it will come to pass. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It comes. It shall come to pass if, there's that word again, if. If you will diligently obey my voice of the Lord your God, to observe carefully all his commandments, which I commanded you today. Tell your neighbor today. Today. Not, uh, that, that was back then, but it's still the same today. It's still the same today. 
that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations. There it is again. Set you high above all nations of the earth. And number two says, verse two, and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. Tell your neighbor, it's going to come upon you and it's going to overtake you. Praise God. Overtake you because you obeyed the voice of the Lord your God. Now, was there anything hard about that? Is there anything difficult about just obeying God's voice? Just doing what he says. When the man of God is up here preaching and, and, and teaching or whatever he's doing, listen to what he's saying. Because it's going to take you somewhere. You know? Here he's talking about obeying and, and observing carefully, you know, the voice of God. And he's talking about today, yes. Today could be your day of salvation. Today, your whole world can change if you just let it. If you want it, how bad do you want it? Do you really want God's blessings and healings? Here God is telling you how you can get them. How you can have them. Obey. And I will set you above all the nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come to you and overtake you because you obeyed the voice of the Lord your God. Just because we obeyed him, we just said, Lord, I'm here. Use me. Do whatever you want. I'll go wherever you want me to go. I'll give it whatever Bible study. I'll go pray for anybody. It ain't about me no more, Lord. It's about you. I no longer live, but you live in me. Come on. Your blessings are going to come. And they're going to be so many that it's going to blow your mind. It's going to overtake you. Jesus says, I'll open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that you cannot receive it all. That you cannot receive it all. If you just pay your tithes. You know, if you pay your tithes. You give you a little 10% and I'm going to give you double. For I am the Lord your God that healeth you. Glory to God. Do you believe it, church? Say amen. amen. Praise God. I believe it. Praise the Lord. He's going to set you up. Above all nations. That tells me I can go wherever I want to go. The Visa card, the gold card, I got something better than that. I got Jesus. <laughs> yeah. If he brought that little young man all the way from there to there, what's he going to do for you? Hmm? He's going to open up doors that you've never seen open. He's going he's to take you to places you have never been, Rosa. If you just obey the voice of the Lord. Man. Don't miss out on this. God done something for us so that we can receive. So that we can receive. Be fruitful and multiply. Glory to God. Now, here's the second one that God will bring up on you. I don't know if you want to hear this one. But it's the word of God. 28.15 says it like this. But it shall come to pass. And like I say, it will come to pass. If, there's that word again. If you do not obey the voice of the Lord your God. To, to observe carefully all his commandments. And his statutes. Which I command you today. That all these curses can come upon you and overtake you. And there's a list of them. There's a list of curses in Deuteronomy 28. I don't know if anybody's ever read Deuteronomy 28. But I'm going to just name a few. You ain't going to be fruitful. Anything that you touch is going to die. Wherever you go, you're not going to be wanted. Your cattle and everything that you plant will die right before your very eyes. 
And it's, everything will be destroyed. Oh, man, there's so many of them. Uh, you're going to be you're going to have plagues. You're going to have sickness like you've never had it before. You want more? I don't want any more. No, I don't want any, I don't want to go any farther or any deeper because it gets real deep. Yeah. Are you going through something? You, you might be going through something small. But you don't want the plagues that God. And there's there's many times, Brother Riley, that I have prayed. I prayed and I told people, look, this is what you have to do. This is all you have to do is simple. Get a clean house, you know, yeah. clean house. Because you're bringing that stuff up on you. And you've been doing this for years. And you haven't reaped anything but sorrow. Yeah. Headaches. You can't hold a job because people are just, you can't deal with people. You're upset, not, not actually at them, but it's how you're living your life. You know, you're not going to have peace. There was a time when I was in the world, I did not have any peace in my life. I could not sleep at night because of the stuff that I brought up on myself. And I would hear a knock, boy, I'd jump out, and I was running out the back door because the law was on me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Sometimes I was outside in my car waiting for him to leave. <laughs> what kind of life is that? That's the most miserable life I ever had. And in and out of jail. Just because I wanted to drink. I loved drinking back then. I'd wake up and go to bed drinking. Smelling like the beer. Thank God for deliverance. Thank God I heard his voice. And I obeyed. Yes. I wouldn't be here today. No, sir, I'd probably be dead. Yeah. I was running around with some crowds that were pretty crazy. Mm -hmm. One time I was going, there was a train coming, and I said, man, I was going to stop, and this person right next to me just floors it. And I said, man, hold up. Don't you see the train coming? And we shoot across the railroad track. <laughs> man, I got off and said, get out of my truck, man. I know I was crazy, but you're crazier. <laughs> <laughs> you know? No, man, there was many times I could have died out there on that highway. One time my sister knows I was, a, I was on the railroad tracks. I had a motorcycle that fell over. I couldn't get it off of me. The train was coming. She came and helped me. One time I was going down in a Camaro down 35, and this law was right up on me, and I was just giving it all I had. I blew my tire out and got it to the side of the road, took off running, boy. Golly, the dogs had to come and sniff me out. <laughs> You're going to be found, yeah. You ain't, you know, the devil got you that away, thinking all crazy. I was, I had that song going, on my way to hell, ACDC, just blaring it. I'm on my way to hell, you know. What was I thinking, saying? Thank God that he... He had mercy and delivered me. You know, that was nothing but the hand of God. Somebody was praying for me. Amen. Yes, God had a plan. It wasn't my plan, it was his plan, and now I'm going to do it his way. And not my way. I don't, man, you all, I'm all yours, Lord. I'm serious. I will sell everything that I got. And I, God, if, I got, if you want me to live out underneath this tree, I will do it for you, Lord. That's how I am. I'm sold out. I, I'm not playing with God. I don't have time. Oh, I, I, it's just time is running out on me. And I'm giving it everything that I got. And the more I read this word, the more I get hungrier and the more it just comes in me and it livens me up. I call my wife up and tell her, ooh, baby, you don't know what God gave me today, you know. And she says, oh, well, what did he give you? And I says, he gave me his precious holy word, you know, and, and I'm blessed, you know. Man, when you can, you know, that's the way we need to communicate with one another. What did God do for you today, sister? Man, let me tell you what he done for me. Yeah. You know, 
Let me tell you where he took me. You know, let me show you the blessings. I'm, man, me and my wife, man, I, God, every time I turn around, there's something God is doing, something with us, blessing us somehow or another. Amen. It's real. Amen. He gives you favor. You're above all nations. You're his people. He's drawing you to himself. Yes. Believe the word. Yes. There's many of us that go home and we sit there and we just don't understand. Why am I living like this? Yes. Check yourself. Yes. Examine yourself. Yes. Get a hold of this word and start reading it. And you're going to see a change. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. Thank you, Lord. And so here we see that Moses is dealing with his people. They have come to this place. So they have, they have uh, seen the curses and they have seen the blessings. Praise God. I'm going to take you to the book of Jeremiah. Glory to God. Let me show you something here in Jeremiah. Thank you, Jesus. <coughs> Glory to God. Jeremiah. All right. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Jeremiah chapter 7. This is what the Lord says to Jeremiah. 22, verse 22, Jeremiah 22. 7, 22. What did not, he's talking here to Jeremiah. Why well, did not speak to your fathers or commanded them in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt concerning the burnt offerings and sacrifice. Praise God. God says, I didn't speak to, his, to your fathers concerning the burnt office, offerings and the sacrifice. They were too busy offering and sacrificing that they were not hearing the voice of God. They were too busy doing their own thing. And it goes to say in 23, but this is what I commanded them saying, obey, 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 obey my voice and I will be your God and you shall be my people. And walk in all the ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well with you. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Jesus was telling them, stop doing what you're doing. I don't care about your sacrifices and your burnt offerings. Listen to what I am saying. Obey my voice. If you start obeying my voice, there's not going to be that many burnt offerings and sacrifices. You're more into sinning. You just don't want to listen to me. And this is what happens in 24. Yet, they did not obey. All through the scriptures in, from when they came out of Egypt, all they done was murmured and complain, and they were just all about them. It was never about the things that God was giving them and doing for them. They were always complaining and murmuring, just just doing their thing. When they went up to when Moses went up to the mountain and speak with God, he left the people down there. What the first thing they do? They said, "Well, Moses is not coming back down, so let's make ourselves a god." Let's, create, let's do a cow here. Let's, let's get, take all the jewelry, all the gold, everything, and let us burn it, and we're going to make a cow so we can worship the cow. You know? That is not what God wanted them to do. God wanted him to wait on him. 
Wait on him. I'm going to bring the word down. You just wait. Just pray. Listen. Praise God. Yet they did not obey or incline their ear. There it is. You, you got to have that ear. You got to hear. You got to hear. But followed their counseling and their doctrines and their evil hearts and went backwards and not forward. God's saying, you're doing it all wrong. You're going backwards instead of forward. I'm trying to give you something. I'm trying to take you somewhere. My God. We don't want to go backwards. We want to go forward. You, you got to have a vision. You got to have a goal. These people that run, you think they're focusing everything else? No, they're focusing on one thing, and that's getting from point A to point B. And they will lose weight, whatever, to psych their mind out because they're, they're going to make that race count. That's the way we need to be. We're in a race. We are in a race. Glory to God. Don't go backwards. Go forward. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And I'm going, this is the, the last of it here in the Old Testament. Let me, let's go to the New Testament. And we've got a couple of scriptures here. I forgot to have them in Jesus' name. Praise God. Let's go to the book of John, chapter 10. Glory to God. John, chapter 10. Thank you, Jesus. Here we're here. Listen closely, church. Don't fall asleep on me. I'm sorry I'm long-winded here. But listen, this is talking about the good shepherd. This is talking about the good shepherd. Who's the good shepherd? Jesus. He's the good shepherd. Glory to God. This is what he says in verse 3, 4, and 5. Glory to God. To him, he's talking about Jesus. The doorkeeper opens and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name, and he leads them out. There it is. There it is. They hear the shepherd, and he calls them by name, and they hear his voice. Man, that's important to listen to today. Because many people are saying some things that are not the shepherd. They're, 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 many people are leading others astray. Okay? They're leading others astray. They're deceiving them. The wolf puts on the sheep clothing, acting like a sheep. Yeah. God is the shepherd. And it says it. To him, the doorkeeper... He opens and the sheep hear his voice. If you're listening, you're going to hear the voice of God. And he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. The only way that you're going to know his, you're his sheep is when you come to a place of repentance. You get baptized in Jesus' name. You put that name on you. And then he fills you with the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit today is leading you. The Comforter came down to lead us. Now, that's his way of speaking to us today. Back then, he spoke to them man to man, eye to eye, they have already done it, but he spoke to them directly. Now, the Holy Spirit is leading and guiding us. We need to listen to the Holy Spirit. It's the same Spirit, it's the same God, the same one. And then he goes to say, and when he brings out his own sheep, there it is. He knows his sheep. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them and the sheep follow him for they know his voice. 
Praise God. He's not in behind them, God telling them to leave, go. He's in front of them. He's leading them to the good pasture, you know, go to good dirt, to the good grass. He's leading his sheep, and they hear his voice. Many times, church, we hear other people and we get deceived. Look at here. I'm going to tell you something. You got a heart. And I opened up my heart to my loved one here because I loved her. Right? And she opened her heart to me. And we communicate like that. We can tell each other things that others, you can't tell others. Because you know her voice and she knows my voice. Praise God. And that's the same way here. They know his voice. They're in love with him. He's the one that's taking care of them. He's been taking care of them all these years. He's not a stranger. No, he's not. He's not a stranger. Praise God. Yet, the other verse says, yet they will by no means follow a stranger. There it goes. But will what? Flee from him. For they do not know the voice of a stranger. Amen. When you hear a preacher preaching something that is not to this word, you better flee. You better get out of there because he's leading you astray. He's going to lead you into a place and he's going to corner you up where the devil can just beat on you and whip you. You know, the wolf, when he comes, I've seen him, he'll spot a sheep and he is going to separate that thing until he gets it by himself and then he, kill, he goes to the kill. That's why that shepherd's got to be there at all times. And when he calls, they better come. Amen? They don't know a voice of a stranger. You know? I can call Sister Pam and say, Sister Pam, I'm your husband. And you know what she's going to say? No, you're not. <laughs> you know? <laughs> she knows his voice, but she, she don't recognize my voice. You know? Many times we open up our hearts. This is where we make up our mistake. We, we, we open up our hearts to everything and anything. And we find ourselves heartbroken. We find ourselves in trouble. Man, I thought he said he loved me. And look at him. He's over with another one. I gave him my whole heart. You see, we've got to be careful. We've got to know the voice of the Lord, the shepherd, for he is the doorkeeper. We got to be careful who we're listening to. Where are we going? Praise God. You hear me, little brother? Yeah, I know you do. <laughs> Glory to God. That's, but that's just, this is God. You know, he's, he's showing us something here, ain't he? He's telling us, be careful who you're listening to, where you're going. Don't just watch the, the voice of a stranger. And then it's going to show over here on 27. It says, my sheep hear my voice. And I know them. And they follow me. You see, he's not leading them nowhere. They, he's just telling them, let's go. And they're going. They're, they're doing. They're obeying. They're hearing his voice. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I hear tell that there's a, a, a boat... It's got a combination to it. And it's a certain voice that that only that, that thing will open to. A certain voice that only that bank will turn and open. Don't open up your hearts to anything and anybody if it ain't God speaking to you. Let him open up that heart. 
Let him lead you into all truth, into all righteousness. Glory to God. I'm going to come to a close here. I'm going to give you one more scripture, okay? And then I'm coming to a close. Praise God. This is going to be in Isaiah chapter 50. Isaiah chapter 50, verse 4. Listen carefully. Isaiah 54. The Lord God gives me a tongue to the learning that I should know how to speak a word in season to him who is weary. He awakens me morning by morning. This is God. This is Jesus speaking here. He awakens me morning by morning. He awakes my ear. God speaking to Jesus morning to morning. That's how God, that's how Jesus communicated with the congregation. God would tell him exactly what to do, where to go, how to say it. He was communicating. That's what led him to the cross. He awakens my ear to hear as the learned. The Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious, nor did I turn away. I gave my back to those who struck me. This is what he's being, talking about being crucified. They whipped him. And my sheep to those who plucked my beard. I did not hide my face from smit it and those that spit it on me. For the Lord God will help me. Therefore I will not this grease. Therefore I have set my face like a flint. Jesus says I heard daily from my God. He gave me directions. He led me. I didn't say anything when they beat me on the back. When they plucked my beard and when they spit it on me. He was being obedient to God. That's what took him to the cross. His love for God and his it says, he, he, it says that he awakes him morning by morning. He whispers in his ear. I've never heard of God shouting. You know? At one time I read a scripture where it was the where wind, wind came, a storm came, an earthquake came, and it was just a silent voice that Jeremiah heard. It was a silent voice. Today, church... Let us give ear to the Lord. Let God have his way with you and obey his voice. And you're going to go farther than anything you've ever been. You're going to do things you've never been, go places you've never been. God is going to take you places. My, my. If you just hearken your ear to the Lord, praise God. Thank you, Brother Rabbit. I close with that.